Well, good morning or afternoon. Today I'm going to show you how to optimize your RRSPs. Pros, the cons, and of course what's the best thing to do. We'll learn when, how, what, the pros, its cons. We're also going to learn about the RSP versus the TFSA helping you choose what's best for you. Alone? Hmm. Now, maybe pay off the mortgage might be best. Uh, maybe they're better together. Uh, are you saving enough for retirement? This, of course, all depends on what your tax bracket is. If you work hard, you should play hard and save hard. You work hard and you deserve to have such fun. You know, a good financial plan and strikes a balance between these two. Having money now and saving for a comfortable retirement. Contributing to your RSP now and have a retirement that you can look forward to. Have you ever wondered if it made more sense to pay off your mortgage or to invest in a registered retirement savings plan? You know, paying off your mortgage quickly makes sense. Uh, but you also need a significant nest egg to retire with comfort. We've got three options. A, B, C. A. Pay, let's pay off the mortgage, then contribute to the RRSP. Well, your advantage is you get additional mortgage payments that go directly to the principal. This will save you interest and reduce the term of your mortgage. Now, the disadvantage is you'll miss out on the benefits of long-term compounding growth and the immediate tax refund. Option B. Let's make regular mortgage payments and RRSP deposits. The advantage? Well, you take advantage of the long-term pounding growth and the immediate tax refund. The disadvantage, by paying your mortgage off slowly, you're going to pay more interest. Depending on your amortization period, you might be at the risk of carrying mortgage debt into retirement. And here comes option C. Well, let's make an RSP deposit and then use your tax refund to pay down your mortgage much faster. The advantage, of course, is that this option will allow you to have the best of both scenarios. Advantage again, RSP contribution results in a tax deduction and allows you to benefit from compound growth. And advantage again, uh, additional mortgage payments will now go directly to the principal building home equity, and reducing borrowing costs. You know, mortgage freedom is a very worthwhile goal. However, consideration of a complete financial plan can help you achieve more. Why don't you book a coffee with one of our team members today and learn how Advisor & Co. and an RSP can be incorporated into your personal financial plan. Here's another option. Have you ever considered borrowing money in order to increase your contribution? You know, unlike credit card debt, RRSP debt is considered good debt. Investment loans and mortgages fall into the good debt category because they help increase your net worth. If you take out an RRSP loan, you can invest right away and take advantage of long-term compounding growth. As well, you get the immediate tax refund. The tax refund that you receive from your contribution is much more than the interest that you're going to pay on the loan. Here is one sample scenario on how it works. Let's say John is 40 years old and he has an income of 55000 He takes out an RRSP loan that's going to be paid off in one year. The loan amount? $10,000. Income tax reduction? At 31%, he receives a tax deduction or reduction of $3,115. His cost of the investment was $6,885. He's got a monthly payment of $586.26. Now that assumes a 4% interest rate and that the tax refund was immediately applied to the loan. At this 4% interest rate, John would have paid approximately $150 of interest on the loan for a total cost of approximately $7,035, which is the $6,885 plus the $150. But he invests $10,000 into his RRSP. So let's fast forward 25 years to the age 65 
assuming an average annual return of 11%, the $10,000 that cost him $7,035 is now worth $135,854.64. Or you could optimize your RRSP loans. Now we're going to base this on your current contribution rate of 700 per month. The current amount of RRSP deposit is $8,400 a year with a current tax rate of 35%. So your current annual contributions, $8,400. A new RRSP loan, $4,523.08. So your total RRSPs for this year is $12,900. $23.08. Now your tax refund this year is $4,523.08, which will pay off your loan completely. And you boosted your RRSPs. Less taxes, more retirement. Now Advisor & Co. has partnered with BMO and B2B Bank to provide you with RRSP loans at competitive rates. So talk to one of our agents today and learn how an RSP can be incorporated into your personal financial plan. So, to help you choose, uh, for years Canadians have used the RSP, actually since 1957, as their primary investment vehicle for savings. Now, when the tax-free savings account came out in 2009, there is a great debate of where to invest, RSP or TFSA. There are some key differences. Uh, there is a document here on the counter that I can give you. It's a lot easier to read than this small print, or I can email it out. Just contact me later. Here is an excerpt of an article that I published, I think it was uh, November of last year. Uh, the TFSA head-to-head -head comparison. There's been a lot of talk about which one is better, TFSA versus RSP, in both the blogosphere and in the media. Both are great savings and investing tools for us Canadians. But there are important differences between and choosing correctly between the TFSA and the RSP can save you thousands of dollars in the long term. Both accounts offer significant advantages. While the RSP offers immediate refund and tax deferral, the TFSA offers flexibility and tax-free growth. Now, depending on your current income and your expected income during retirement, a balanced retirement plan should include both RRSP and the tax-free savings account. Talk to one of our team members today to learn how an RRSP and TFSA can be incorporated into your personalized financial plan. Here, the last item. I think, or the second last item. Now, are you saving enough for retirement? Now, a common rule of thumb is to take your annual needs and divide it by 4% to arrive at your nest egg requirements. For example, John here earns 55000 per year and presumes he can live on 70% of that amount. So that is 38500 per year. If he gets Canada Pension Plan, well, that will take care of 13000 $100 as of 2016 and that's the maximum if he contributed maximum every year while employed. So that will leave a balance of 25400 annually to come from his investments. So 25400 divided by 4% equals 635000 is needed in the bank after taxes are taken out. That's what he needs. So how are you doing? Where is the best growth? Well, let's take a look. Just because they have not been told, most people are still using a bank. That's not a good choice. They only have four to six different options for you. Wiser people will use a financial planner. At least this will give you 20 to 30 options. Now, savvy people will use a broker that will have access to all companies in Canada. This gives you one place to go for all your needs and about 4,600 options. So who do you think can find you a better rate? Let's take a look at the rates.
So, most people, as I said, are still using a bank and they have four to six options. Uh, let's take a look at the blue line that it will indicate the bank average rate for the last three years. The red line indicates a really, really good single company agent. This information is current as of January 24th, 2017, a uh, record going back to September 27th of 2013. Again, the blue line indicates the bank average for the last three years, and that has grown 5.75%. Uh, uh, the average, uh, the red line, indicates a really, really good agent. In fact, the company agent, single company, that's only 1% of the advisors, and he achieved a growth of about 23% over the three years. The top lines are four or five different products that are available from a broker. It's the same RRSP to, or TFSA, but faster growth. Which one would you rather have? Now, one thing we can't afford to forget, and that's inflation. For the last three years in total, it's been 6.12%. So your bank total growth over three years, 575 Technically, you're losing money. Now, the 1% company advisor, his total growth was 33.34%. Broker funds available, total growth was 49.03, 43.32, 52.06, 42 and 47.89% growth in the same three-year period. End result, there's the dollars.